Through the tutorials, you will familiarize yourself with the basic aspects of running your very own restaurant empire. It is important that you pay attention to the animated arrows that appear on the screen, as they will point to important buttons or other tutorial subjects. If for any reason you would like to exit the game, press the You can also hold your left mouse button on the tutorial window and drag the tutorial box anywhere on the screen. Go ahead and give it a try, and then left-click on the Next button to proceed. Since this is your first taste of becoming a restaurateur, we will start easy and work our way up the You are currently in the city view. You can zip around the city by moving the mouse to the screen edges or by using the arrow keys on your keyboard. Go on, take a look around Gay Paris. You can also look at the city from different angles and perspectives. Hold down the right mouse to zoom in or out of the city. While we're at it, let's look at some items on the top menu bar. There are two numeric displays to the left of the top menu bar. The display to the far left is the cash indicator. This shows you the total amount of money you have available. Left click on the next button to continue. Next is the profit indicator, which shows you how much money you actually made in the past month. Now let's go into your restaurant. The area indicated by the arrows is the restaurant indicator. Once you start owning more and more restaurants, you can use the square arrow buttons to cycle through the different restaurants in your possession. This is the interior view of your restaurant. If you ever want to leave the restaurant, left click, you can also double click on any restaurant. If you are ever doubtful about a button's function, simply mouse over the button or an interface element. A brief pop-up describing the button or interface function will appear. Extended help will be displayed if you mouse over the button a bit longer. Left-click on the Next button to continue.
Your customers like to look at interesting objects while eating. Decoration adds ambiance to the dining experience. So let's make your restaurant more attractive. Left click. These are the main categories of items that you may place in your restaurants. There are seating arrangements, decoration, rooms and textures, lighting and accessories. Clicking on any of these buttons will bring up that item category as well as their subcategories. Let's spice things up in this dismally bland restaurant now, shall we? Left click on the decoration button to continue. There are wall mounted, floor mounted, and tabletop mounted subcategories. For now, let's focus on wall mounted items. The button is already highlighted in yellow. Left click on the next button when you are ready for the next step. All decoration items have at least one attribute, and at most two. Some increase a restaurant's comfort. Now drag the object in hand onto the restaurant floor. Do you see a colored box below the item? That's the item's bounding box, the physical space the item you're holding occupies. You cannot place the item when the box is red. While you're at it, place a few more items on the walls. When you feel you've got the hang of it, left click on the next button. Good going! Now that there are a few more items placed on your restaurant walls, let's see what we can do about the floor. Left click on the floor mounted button. Placing items on a restaurant floor is similar to mounting items on walls. Pick a few items that catch your fancy, then place them on the restaurant floor. When you are satisfied with the amount of decoration you have in your restaurant, left click on the next button to continue. You are obviously a quick learner. Remember, whenever you need help, you can seek me out. Simply left click on the Adventure Mode button at the bottom left corner of the screen. The Adventure Mode interface will appear. All you have to do after this tutorial is to locate my house on the location list and double click on my name, the one that says Michel Leboeuf.
Well done, Armand. Now that you know how to decorate your restaurant, let's see what you'll serve your customers. This is a food establishment after all. Left click on the food menu button. You will see your restaurant's menu cover. You do not have any dishes set up in the menu yet, so this is the first thing that we will remedy. Below the menu is the food menu interface. There are several buttons, but for now we will focus on adding recipes to your menu. I will explain to you the other buttons in further detail later on. Let's add a recipe to your menu now. To do this, left click on the You will notice that the food menu interface has been swapped with the recipes interface, the repository of all your available recipes. As you are just starting out, you only have a handful of recipes available. The five square buttons on the top of the recipe interface represent food course categories. Left click on the next button to continue. Below the food course buttons is a recipe pane of the recipe currently viewed, as well as its name. The recipe pane also has two round arrow buttons that can be used to go forward and back through your list of recipes. In this case, the main courses. Go ahead, try it now. Left click on the arrow buttons to cycle through your available recipes. When you're done, left click on the next button. Notice the flag icons at the end of each recipe. The flag icons indicate a recipe suitability for a certain cuisine. French recipes with French cuisine, Italian recipes with Italian cuisine. Now, instead of flipping through the list one by one using the arrow buttons, let's bring up the drop-down list. 
simply left-click anywhere in the recipe name display. Give it a try. You will be able to view several recipes at the same time. You can also use the scroll bar to go up and down your list. Why don't you choose a recipe now? Simply left-click on a recipe. You will notice on the bottom of the recipe interface four large round buttons. These are, from left to right, the duplicate recipe, the add to food menu, the view food menu, and the filtering toggle buttons. To add this recipe to your menu, left-click on the add to food menu button. A pop-up window will appear confirming the new recipe entry in your menu. To see your new recipe on the menu, left-click on the View Food Menu button. Now you're back in the Food Menu interface. The difference being we have added a recipe. Now at least customers can order something. This is a rather spartan selection that you offer. Let's try to add some variety to the menu by repeating the procedure to add more recipes. When you are done establishing your menu, left-click on the Next button to continue. Make sure you are viewing the food menu interface for this next step. Notice on the food menu how arrow buttons appear on the bottom corners of the menu pages. Use these buttons to flip through the pages of your menu. Why don't you see what you have decided to offer your future clientele by left-clicking on the Previous Page and Next Page arrow buttons? When you are done viewing the recipe, so far, so good. Now that you understand the a pop-up with a list of hot and cold beverages will appear. The cold beverages are further divided into alcoholic and non-alcoholic. All the beverages come with a fixed buying price, so all you have to do is left-click on the check boxes to the left of each beverage to include it as part of your restaurant service. When you're done choosing the beverages, left-click on the OK button at the bottom of the beverage list. In case you haven't noticed, I'd like to give you a word on alcoholic beverages. If you plan to serve liquor, you will need to pay a liquor license fee of $20,000 up front before you can serve alcoholic beverages. Let's tart up the menu design. There are three things you can do to alter your menu's appearance. You can change the title font, the text font, and the background design of your menu. Let's start by changing the title font. Left-click on the Title Font button. Two arrow buttons will appear to the sides. Use these arrow buttons to cycle through the available fonts until you see a font that you like. Then deactivate the Title Font button by left-clicking on it again. You can also left-click on the text font and the background buttons to change your restaurant menu's appearance. Design your menu until you have customized its appearance to your liking and to your restaurant's suiting. When you are done, left-click on the Next button to continue. There's only a bit more to go. If you ever want to view specifics regarding any recipe in your menu, simply double-click on the recipe name and you will be brought back. Notice the default price on the recipe menu, which is your restaurant's selling price for that recipe. When you are ready, left-click on the next button to continue. The last thing I want to go over with you is on the food menu interface. 
So bring up the food menu interface if you haven't done so already. If you ever want to get rid of a recipe from the menu, say due to poor sales, then highlight the recipe. Excellent! You are becoming quite skilled at juggling recipes and menus. Now all you have to do is to properly set up your food menu for your new restaurant using the skills you have just learned in this tutorial. When setting up your menu, remember that variety is the spice of life. Try to add as many breakfast, appetizer, soup, main course, and dessert recipes as you can. This will give your customers a wide selection of offerings from which to choose. And don't forget the beverages! After you're done setting up your restaurant's menu, there's one last thing I want to show you before I feel confident to unleash you into the world of high cuisine. Meet me back at my house for your next crash course in becoming a restaurateur. You have added decoration and placed recipes on the menu. But who's going to take the orders? Who's going to prepare the recipes? Who's going to make sure that customers pay up? Apart from your name, the staff list is almost completely bare. That's understandable. You haven't hired anyone to work for you yet. There is a column of buttons near the middle right of the staff list interface. They are, from top to bottom, the switch to list mode, hire staff, raise. Notice how the interface now displays quite a bit of information. Let's break this information down into digestible chunks, shall we? Let's start from the top of the interface and work our way down. Notice the two round buttons on the top of the interface. One depicts a chef and another depicts a waiter. These are to switch between the Chef Panel and Waitstaff Panel. If you left-click on the Waitstaff Panel button, you will see that the displayed information changes to show relevant staff information. Any restaurant needs at least a chef to prepare the recipes, a captain for taking orders, a server to, well, serve the food, and a receptionist to show the customers to their seats. Oh, and I almost forgot, you need to hire a kitchen porter to wash the dishes. Go ahead and hire all these posts. No need to hire a chef when you've got your trusting self to work the kitchen. Once you are done hiring, left-click on the Next button to continue.
A word on receptionists. They can only carry out their duties effectively if they have a reception desk handy. You can find a reception desk in the interior panel. You remember how to place items to equip and decorate your restaurant, right? Now place a reception desk near the entrance of your restaurant. We will continue with training afterwards. This is also the ideal time to explain to you how to rotate, move, and delete items. Notice the two round buttons near the end of the interior interface? They are the Adjust Items and Delete Items buttons. If you want to adjust an item, simply left-click on the Adjust Items button. You will notice that the cursor changes to reflect this. Then, left-click on the item you want to adjust and move it to where you want it to reside. If you want to rotate an item, left-click and hold down the mouse button while you rotate the mouse. You will see the item rotate as well. Left-click on the Next button to continue. To delete an item, left-click on the Delete Item button. Then, double-click on the item you want. Good! Now let's go back to the Staff panel. Let's start with the List Mode button. The List Mode shows a list of all your employees. Here you can quickly glance at your roster of hired personnel and can also rapidly pick out any missing staff position Notice the two small icons to the right of each employee position, complete with rating bars right next to each employee's name. The metal icon represents a chef's reputation or staff's skill level, and the flag icon represents employee morale. Here you can quickly see who is low on morale or reputation. If you left-click on any one of these names, you will go back to the detailed view. Now you're back in the detailed view. Most of the buttons are now available. You should already be familiar with the first two buttons. The other buttons are Raise or Lower Salary, Transfer Staff, and Fire Staff. These buttons are relatively easy to understand. I'll let you...
Good going. You are just about ready to start taking orders in your first restaurant. To open your newly equipped restaurant, left click on the Open Close Restaurant button to begin your fledgling career as a restaurateur. Now, just be patient and customers are bound to come in. If you are impatient, you can always accelerate the game's speed by left-clicking on one of the four speed bars to increase or decrease the game's speed. Go ahead. The round button to the left of the speed buttons is the Pause Resume Game toggle. Left-click the button to first pause, then left-click again to resume the game. There's something you should know about the speed settings and how time passes in the restaurant universe. In order to progress faster, a month's time is simulated based on your restaurant's performance at the end of the first day of each month. Left-click on the Next button to continue. Now I'd like to explain to you about the Information Center interface. This interface can help you better manage this and all your... Looking at the column of buttons, we can see, from top to bottom, the Report Management, Report List, the Report, and the Goal button. Now take a look at the top row of buttons. There are, from left to right, the restaurant ratings, sales report, statistics, income statements, financial graphs, and complaints buttons. Click on each one and familiarize yourself with the different types of information displayed. Left-click on the Next button when you are ready to continue. Now go back to the Restaurant Ratings button. 
This indicates how well your restaurant is fair. Pay special attention to the environment and food category ratings. The higher your restaurant's value in these categories, the more likely customers will choose your restaurant. Provided, that is, you keep the price and complaints down. Do that, and you have a hit restaurant on your hands. When you're ready to move on, as you can see, the top row of buttons now displays Wow! All this restaurant managing has got me really hungry, Armand. But the good news is, you now have all... Go to back to the practice with someone else. Thank <laughs> you. 